clavicle, also called the collar bone, is a slender S-shaped bone that connects the Asia skeleton to the pectoral guido. It extends between the manumbrum of the stanium and the acronym of the scapula. The bone is actually categorized as a long bone and can be easily felt along its length under the skin. The clavicle plays an essential role in everyday movement by acting as a brace for the shoulder. It also allows the transfer of weight from the upper limb to the asial skeleton. Now, due to its critical roles, injury to the clavicle can significantly impair your daily activities. So, the clavicle can be divided into three parts, the sternal end, the shaft and the acromial end. The sternal end, also the medial end of the clavicle, has a large facet that articulates with the menumbrum of the sternum, actually forming the sternoclavicular joint. Now, the inferior surface of the sternal end features a rough oval depression where the costoclavicular ligament attaches. Now, over to the shaft. The shaft of the clavicle actually serves as an attachment site for several muscles, including the deltoid, the trapezoid, the subclavius, the pectoralis major, the stenocleidomastoid, and the stenohyoid muscles. Let's move over to the acromial, also the lateral end. The lateral end of the clavicle contains a small facet that articulates with the acromium of the scapula at the acromioclavicular joint. It also provides an attachment point for the coracoclavicular ligament, which we are going to talk about later in this video. They are a strong structure that suspends the weight of the upper limb from the clavicle. So, let's talk about the articulations of the clavicle. Due to the shape of the clavicle and the position, it forms two synovial diatrosis joints. The first one is the acromioclavicular joint. It is formed by the acromial end of the clavicle and the acromium of the scapula. It actually allows slight gliding movement along the shoulder. And it is surrounded by a capsule of articular cartilage filled with synovial fluid. Remember, it is actually a synovial joint. Then the second joint is the sternoclavicular joint. It is formed by the sternal end of the clavicle and then the manumbrum of the sternum. It actually serves a very important role because it anchors the clavicle and the scapula to the asial skeleton. It allows quite limited movement, such as the protraction and retraction, depression and elevation, and also slight rotation. Now, these joints are surrounded by an articular cartilage capsule with a fibrocartilage disc that divides it into two cavities. Now, there is a special thing about this joint. It is actually stabilized by two ligaments, the interclavicular ligament and the costoclavicular ligament. The interclavicular ligament helps to prevent any form of dislocation during the shoulder depression, while the costoclavicular ligament, on the other hand, prevents dislocation during shoulder elevation. Now, finally, let's talk about the clinical significance of the clavicle. Fracture to the clavicle are common and can usually result from trauma such as accident or contact spots. The clavicle the clavicle's exposure to compression forces makes it vulnerable to injury, which can lead to fractures. Now, these fractures can significantly affect the arm movement and the daily activity of the affected individual. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And remember, this is simply an overview of the clavicle. You can find other materials to study hard and learn about the blood supply and and every other ligament that pass through or attaches itself to the clavicle. Until next time, thanks for watching.